For England in 94, Fred and Rosemary West were a normal couple, seemingly of limited means and introverted, but who managed to feed their children. However, what no one knew was that behind that mask of good parents hid indescribable horrors that cost the lives of dozens of women, including their own daughters, who were also part of their perverse games. Today, I'm going to tell you about the mystery of Fred and Rosemary, and a couple who even abused their own children. Their story seems like it's out of a horror movie that marked the United Kingdom. They are probably the most hated couple in that country. Fred West's childhood was one of the stages where the first traumas began that would later cause him to become one of the bloodiest bullies in history. Well, the fact that he never received even a small bit of love from his parents meant that he never knew the meaning of this feeling. The nights were a total nightmare for this boy, as his father would come home and beat and mistreat him, while his mother physically abused him when he was just 12 years old. So he made the decision to leave the house, but fate was even worse on the streets so it didn't take him long to return. Things had already changed by that time. Now it was he who spoke of his younger sister until she finally spoke up and he was sentenced. He was only locked up in jail for a couple of months and then would be released for good behavior. As he grew up, Fred became an expert in lies and that's how he attracted girls until he ran into an old girlfriend who called herself Rena Costello. This girl was one of those sellers of caresses and pleasures, you know. They got married two months after seeing each other again he didn't care that this girl was pregnant with another man's child, and in time they had another baby. The marriage obviously was never easy, as Fred's demands were too much for Rena. The economic instability, and not to mention all the times he was unfaithful, were the perfect excuse to leave him. West now started an affair with the nanny Marianne, who after several encounters would become pregnant. This news was not very pleasing to him, so he made the decision to completely eliminate the possibility of having another child. Without thinking twice, he went to where they always met. That day everything was running normally, and Fred, as always, started lying to go to a much more private place. Upon arriving at the place, he began to beat her until he took her life. Then he cut off both the fingers of her feet and hands to keep them as a trophy, while the other remains ended up in a meadow near Mosh, where with great patience he perfectly removed the fetus from her womb and buried it next to the mother. Some time later he met Rosemary, who he met at a bus stop and took her home, introducing her as the new nanny. At just 15 years old, she fell in love with Fred, who also had a lot of interest in her from the beginning, as she was the perfect woman for him, his soulmate. This girl was ruthless, violent, and also perverted, she never had problems having intimate relations with other men when Fred asked her to, as she just wanted to satisfy her man's desires. After they realized they were crazy about each other, they decided to live together, bringing with them the two children from his previous marriage. Because for this, I think I hadn't told you, but Reyna had left the two girls with Fred. Of course, Raymarie was not the best stepmother for the girls, especially with Charmaine, whom she treated with contempt and whenever she had the chance she made her suffer. For her part the girl kept quiet, she endured that suffering and never cried. Until finally in a fit of rage Rosemary took her life. When Rena came to visit to see her little daughters, she suddenly noticed the absence of Charmaine. Despairingly she started inquiring about her. There were several screams and claims from the woman. Fred was unfazed by all these screams and small blows of helplessness. Suddenly he began to beat the sand in cold blood until he finally ended his life. Then he began a ritual of dismemberment, starting where he again took each one, like his previous victim, each of the feet and hands and detached the knee. When only small parts were left, he put them in a black bag and then returned to the place where he buried his first victim, to also bury her far from where he was and not raise any suspicion. In time, he would marry Rosemary, this in the year 72, and they now had their first daughter. Not having the necessary resources, 
They had the idea of renting rooms to strangers. They themselves would pick up people on the roads and offer them a place to stay. Meanwhile, they kept looking for ways to get money quickly and effortlessly, to which Fred suggested that they put a room called Rose above their house, where after the birth of their other children, they would put a little red light on the door to warn the children not to enter because their mother was busy being intimate with another person. Fred loved what he was doing, as he had no problem with seeing someone else touching his wife. There were times when Fred would watch from the edge of the door what she was doing with other people, whether it was with men or women. The gender didn't matter to this man, and she gave pleasure to anyone who paid her. One of the survivors, who was a neighbor of the couple, recounts that when she got in the car, she noticed that they looked like normal people and that she could trust them. In fact, when she told them about her financial situation, they did not hesitate to offer her a job as a nanny. As the weeks went by, the couple made many insinuations to this person, this girl, until they finally proposed a meeting with the three of them, which she immediately rejected. Sometime later, the couple apologized to her and begged her to return to the house, which she finally agreed to. This woman recounts that the day she returned, they opened the door for her like any other day, and amidst talks and laughter, the young woman began to feel dizzy until she finally fell asleep. Among all these mental gaps, she remembers sitting in a chair almost unconscious for the couple to approach her, and suddenly the girl felt her cheek burning from the great impact of Fred's fist. Then they would hit her in the body, and several more times around her body. Finally, they would tie her up. Her statement, the victim's statement, was, They told me they were going to take my life that there were many girls buried in the yard that the police had not found. The police, for some reason, decided not to investigate the marriage, and this person would only escape from that city to never again run into these monsters. Another victim of the marriage would be a young woman named Caroline Owens, who had also been part of the strategy of being hired as a nanny and then physically abused. She was held for a long time in the couple's house. She is known by her name, because she also had the luck to run away and report to the police who didn't do much. They only find the couple and let them free again. Others like Carol Cooper or Lucy Partington, who were picked up at the bus stop promising them a cozy and cheap place, were just more victims of the couple's kidnapping and torture. These last two girls unfortunately could not escape from that house of terror being buried in the basement of the house. Not before, let's see. How do I tell you physically from them and providing them with a couple of tortures that increased the West's pleasure? They abused all these girls. But this is not the worst. They even took advantage of their own daughters just to please themselves. They recorded them from the part where they touched them to where they began to beat them to the point of taking their lives. The images were so cruel, so inhuman that many could not stand to watch the videos for more than 10 minutes. At this moment, I don't know if these videos are on the network, but if they are, well, I can't show them to you. Let me tell you a little about what they did to their daughter. In the early 70s, the judges took Annie Mary, as I tell you, their little eight-year-old daughter, to the basement. It is said that in that place, a room of suffering was built especially for this little girl, where they abruptly took her away, made her suffer, and tied her up. This happened while Rose watched the whole act and Fred took advantage of the daughter. Sometimes they took turns, because Rose also did it for her own pleasure. This suffering continued until the girl became pregnant, but she lost it due to the constant beatings and tortures she suffered at the hands of her parents until she finally got a boyfriend and left the house never to return. However, with Annie Mary no longer in the house, the next to suffer was Heather. They did the same to her as they did to her older sister. Her father would tell her the following, all girls do it. You're lucky to have a father like me. As the little girl grew up, she would tell her everything that was done to one of her closest friends, which made it reach the ears of her friend's mother, and she wanted to do something about it. For this reason, Fred and Rosemary were so angry that they decided to take Heather's life using the same procedure as with the previous women I told you about. Heather's own brother, fearing that they would also end him, followed his father's orders and dug a pit in their garden, putting there the remains the little pieces of his sister. By this time, investigations began to open up. Now the police really had their eyes on this family. They finally got a restraining order alleging that the bones were taking advantage of minors and that their daughter had suddenly disappeared and this was not reported by her own parents. Upon entering the couple's house, the police began to dig, finding bones all over the garden and tufts of hair 
where it was declared that at least two victims were buried in this place. Fred, no longer able to deny that he had committed all these acts, began to list the women whose lives he had taken, giving a total of nine women, including his first wife and youngest daughter. He confessed all this on the condition that they wouldn't do anything to Rosemary, and even that they had a love if this can be called love. The investigations expanded to other places where they found more bodies. It was asserted that these were also events associated with the Wests, since the patterns they followed, such as tearing off certain parts of the body and burying them in a specific way, indicated that it was Fred's same style, concluding that they ended up killing more than 12 people who were also cut up. Ultimately, Fred was jailed without a trial. He was sad in this place and desperate because he had been taken away from Rosemary. And with nothing else to do, he cowardly decided to take his own life by hanging himself in his cell. But before he passed away, he wrote on a wall, In loving memory, Fred West rests in peace where there is no shadow, and falls into perfect peace, waiting for Rose, his wife, while Rosemary never confessed. But still she was sentenced to life imprisonment. Today, the West's House of Terror is a path that connects two streets and the neighbors never spoke of this aberration again. Today the West's House of Terror is a path that connects two streets and the neighbors never spoke of this case again. But if you liked this mystery and have any request, suggestion, you can leave me comments below and remember that I also upload the audios to Spotify, and if you want to see extra content, you can also access the, what's it called? No, not to OnlyFans, to join. See you in the next mystery.